Three beggars call punctually every day at hospitable houses in Mingwell Street. At about 10, an Indian came in his dhoti and white jacket and we poured a tin of rice into his sack. He carried on his back. At 12, an old woman smoking a pipe came and she got a scent. At 2, a blind man led by a boy called for his penny. Sometimes we had a rock. One day, a man called and said he was hungry. We gave him a meal. He asked for a cigarette and wouldn't go until we had lit for him. That man never came again. The, strang the strangest caller came one afternoon at about, at about 4 o'clock. I had come back from the school and was in my home clothes. The man said to me, Sony, may I come inside your yard? We had a small man and he was a small man and he was tidily dressed. He wore a hat, a white shirt and black trousers. I asked, what do you want? He said, I want to watch your bees. We had four small grew group palm trees and they were full of uninvited bees. I ran up the steps and shouted, Ma, it, ha it have a man outside here. He say he want to watch the bees. My mother called out, looked at the man and asked in an unfriendly way, What do you want? The man said, I want to watch your bees. His English was so good. It didn't sound natural and I could see my mother was worried. She said to me, stay here and watch him while he watched the bees. The man said, thank you madam, you have done a good deed today. He spoke very slowly and very correctly, as though every word was costing him money. We watched the bees. This man and I for about an hour squatting near the palm trees. The man said, I like watching bees, Sony. Do you like watching bees? I said, I ain't have the time. He shook his head sadly. He said, that's what I do. I just watch. I can watch ants for days. Have you ever watched ants and scorpions and centipedes and, and cogories? Have you watched those? I shook my head. I said, what you does do, mister? He got up and said, I'm a poet. I said, a good poet? He said, the greatest in the world. What is your name, mister? B. Wordsworth. B for Bill. Black. Black Wordsworth. White Wordsworth was my brother. We shared one heart. I can watch a small flower like the morning glory and cry. I said, why you does cry? Why, boy, why, you will know when you grow up. You are a poet too, you know. And when you are a poet, you can cry for everything. I couldn't laugh. He said, You like your mother? When she is not beating me. He pulled out a printed sheet from his hip pocket and said, On this paper is the greatest poem about mothers and I am going to sell it to you at a bargain price for 4 cents. I went inside and I said, Ma, you want to buy a poetry for 4 cents? My mother said, tell that blasted man to haul his tail away from your, my yard. You hear? I said to B. Wordsworth. My mother say, she ain't have four cents. B. Wordsworth said, it is, it is the poet's tragedy. And he put the paper back in his pocket. He didn't seem to mind. I said, is a funny way to go around selling poetry like that. Only Californians do that sort of thing. A lot of people does buy, he said. No one has yet bought a single copy. But why you does go keep on going around selling them? He said, in this way I watch many things and I was always in hope to meet poets. I said, you really think I is a poet? You're, you're as good as me, he said. And when B. Wordsworth left, I prayed I would see him again. About a week later, coming back from the school one afternoon, I met him at the corner of Mickwell Street. He said, I've been waiting for you for a long time. I said, you sell any poetry yet? He shook his head. He said, in my yard, I have the best mango tree in the port of Spain. And now the mangoes are ripe and red and very sweet and juicy. I've waited here for you to tell you this and I and to invite you to come and eat some of my mangoes. He lived in Alberto Street. 
in one room to hut placed in right right in the center of the lot the yard seemed all green there was a big mango tree there was a coconut tree and there was a plum tree the place looked wild as though it wasn't in the city at all you could see all the big concrete houses in the street he was right the mangoes were sweet and juicy i ate about six and the yellow mango juice ran down my arms to my elbows and down my mouth to my chin and my shirt was stained my mother said when i got home where you was you think you is a man now and go go all over the place go cut a whip for me she bit me rather badly and i ran out of the house fearing that i would never come back i went to b wordsworth town i was so angry my nose was bleeding b wordsworth said stop crying and we will go for a walk i stopped crying but i was breathing short we went for a walk we walked down st clair st clair avenue to savanna and we walked to race course b wordsworth said now let us lie on the grass and look up at the sky I want you to think how far those stars are from us. I did as he told me and I saw what he meant. I felt like nothing and at the same time I had never felt so big and great in my in, in all my life. I forgot all my anger and all my tears and all the blows. When I said I was better he began telling me the names of the stars and I particularly remembered the constellation of Orion, the hunter. Though I don't really know why I could I can spot Orion even today but I have forgotten the rest Then a light was flashed in our faces and we saw a policeman He got up from the grass the policeman said what are you doing here B Wordsworth said I have been asking the same question for 40 years We came we, we, we became friends B Wordsworth and I He told me you must never tell any anybody about me and about the mango tree and the coconut tree and the plum tree. You must keep that a secret. If you tell anybody, I will know because I am a poet. I gave him my word and I kept it. I liked this little room. It had no more furniture than George's front room, but it looked cleaner and healthier. But it also looked lonely. One day I asked him. Mr Wordsworth why you does keep all this bush in your yard ain't it does make the place damp he said listen and i will tell you a story once upon a time a boy and a girl met each other and they fell in love they loved each other so much that they got married they were both poets he loved words she loved grass and flowers and trees they lived happily in the single room and then one day the girl poet said to the boy poet we are going to have another poet in the family But this poet was never born because the girl died and the young poet died with her inside her and the girl's husband was very sad and he said he would never touch a thing in girl's garden garden and so the garden remained and grew high and wild I looked at B Wordsworth and he told me his lovely story he seemed too old to grow older I understood his story We went for long walks together. We went to the botanical gardens and the rock gardens. We climbed Chancellor Hill in the late afternoon and watched the darkness fall on the port of Spain and watched the lights go on in the city and on the ships in harbor. He did everything as though he was doing it for the first time in his life. He did everything as though he was doing some church rite. He would say to me, "Now, How about having ice cream? And when I said yes, he would grow very serious and say, "Now which cafe shall we patronize?" As though it were a very important thing, he would think for some time about it and finally say, "I think I will go and negotiate the purchase with the with that shop." The world became a most exciting place. One day when I was in his yard, he said to me, "I have a good great secret which I am going to tell you." I said it's really a secret at the moment yes I looked at him and he looked at me he said this is just between you and me remember I am writing a poem oh I said disappointed he said but this is a different sort of poem this is the greatest poem in the world I whistle I have been working for it on it for more than 5 years now 
I will finish it in about 22 years from now and that is if I keep on writing at the present rate. You does write a lot then? He said. Not anymore, I just write one line a month. But I make sure it is a good line. I asked. What, is, what was this last month's good line? He looked up at the sky and said, The past is deep. I said, it's a, It is a beautiful line. B. Wordsworth said, I hope to distill the experiences of a whole one whole month into the single line of a poetry. So in 22 years, I shall have written a poem that will sing to the humanity. I was filled with wonder. Our walks continued. We walked along the seawall at the dock site one day and I said, Mrs. W Mr. Wordsworth, if I drop this pen in the water, you think it will float? He said, this is a strange world. Drop your pen and let us see what happened. The pen sang. I said, how is the poem this, this month? But he never told me any other line. He merrily said, oh, it comes, you know, it comes. Or we will sit on the sea wall and watch the liners come into a, the harbor. But of the greatest poem in the world, I heard no more. I felt he was growing older. How you does live, Mr. Wordsworth? I asked him one day. He said, do you mean how I get money? When I nodded, he laughed in a croaked way. He said, I sing calypsos in calypso season. And the last you, and that last you, the rest of the year? It's enough. But you will be the richest man in the world when you write the greatest poem. He didn't reply. One day when I went to see him in his little house, I found him lying on his bed. He looked so old and so weak that I found myself wanting to cry. He said, the poem is not going well. He wasn't looking at me. He was looking through the window at the coconut tree and he was speaking as though I wasn't there. He said, when I was 20, I felt the power within myself. Then almost in front of my eyes, I could see his face growing older and more tired. He said, but that, that was long time ago. And then I felt it was ne it's so neatly, it was as though I have been slapped by my mother. I could see it clearly on his face. It was there for everyone to see, death on this shrinking face. He looked at me, saw my tears and sat up. He said, come, I went and sat on his knees. He looked into my eyes and said, oh, you can see it too. I always knew you had po the poet's eye. He didn't even look sad and that made me burst out crying loudly. He pulled me to his thin chest and said, Do you want me to tell you a funny story? And he smiled encouragingly at me, but I couldn't reply. He said, When I have finished this story, I want you to promise that you will go away and never come back to see me. Do you promise? I nodded. He said, Good. Well, listen. That story I told you about the boy poet and the girl poet, do you remember that? That wasn't true. It was something I just made up. All this talk about poetry and the greatest poem in the world, that wasn't true either. Isn't that the funniest thing you have heard? But his voice broke. I left the house and ran home crying, like a poet for everything I saw. I walked along the Alberto street a year later, but I couldn't but I could not see a sign of the poet's house. It hasn't vanished just like that. It had been pulled down and a big two-storied building had taken its place. The mango tree and the plum tree and the co coconut tree had all been cut down and there was a brick and concrete everywhere. It was just as though B. Wordsworth had never ex existed.